Hi, Dr. Vold here. I'm here to talk about something that potentially can be transformative for you, which is refractive surgery. As many of you know, you've all heard of uh, LASIK and may have heard of even PRK, which is photorefractive keratectomy. And then also we've had uh, people that are familiar with intraocular contact lenses. And now the newest kid on the block is this SMILE procedure. And actually, we're the only center in the state of Arkansas that offers this at this time. And we've been doing this for several years now. Let me tell you a little bit about who might be candidates for this and then also uh, which procedure might be best for you as you're really evaluating your options here. First of all, we start refractive surgery typically in your 20s, and we can do this actually up into your 50s and 60s, and we've even done people in their 70s and 80s. I will tell you, as I get older, a lot of times uh, we'll actually do intraocular lenses, which uh, can actually correct for all distances, because as we age, we start to lose that zoom effect of our lenses. So sometimes we'll think about that. But let me tell you, LASIK, SMILE, PRK, and intraocular lenses are fantastic because they're remarkably stable and they can give you just incredible vision outcomes. Let's talk a little bit about them. First of all, let me just start with the intraocular contact lens. This is actually a little contact that I can make through a tiny little incision in your eye, and we actually place it inside of the eye on top of your natural eye lens. The advantage of this is that if you have thin corneas, this is something that really you're a candidate for no matter what uh, the procedure is, as long as your eyes are big enough for, for the lens to fit inside the eye. The other thing is it can treat astigmatism. For people that are super nearsighted that oftentimes were not considered candidates for, for refractive surgery, these patients do extremely well with this. If, for instance, maybe you don't like this procedure or there are potentially some other issues you develop, it's a completely reversible procedure. Through a tiny little incision, we can actually just take that little lens out and there's no harm, no foul. It is really remarkable what we can do with that procedure. The other one that uh, has been around for a long time is called PRK, or photorefractive keratectomy, as I mentioned before. And what we do there is we just use a laser for just a matter of a few seconds, and we just sculpt the sur sur surface of the eye. The advantage of this, there's no incisions with the pr procedure. Uh, we can actually remove scars and irregularities in your cornea. And really, later on down the line, no one will even know that you had the procedure most often. The nice thing about this is that uh, for people that are super active in combat sports, uh, potentially uh, are concerned about having incisions, this is something that can really work well for you. Maybe even have thinner corneas or dry eye symptoms as well. The only downside for this is it just takes a little longer to recover from. It may take weeks to actually months to get your best vision with this procedure. So that's one of the downsides of it. LASIK, as many of you are familiar with, this is kind of like magic uh, with the laser procedure in many cases. It's just instantaneous recovery. Uh, when this became on the market uh, in the late 90s, really what happened was uh, people were just absolutely astonished because they're literally seeing 2020 oftentimes on the first day after surgery. The cool part of this is you get that instantaneous recovery. There's this wow effect that goes with this. We can treat nearsightedness, farsightedness, and also astigmatism, which is really amazing. Uh, the nice thing about this also is if you need to have a, a little enhancement later on, you can easily lift up the flap and, and just treat with the laser again. For some people, however, they're a little bit more prone to dry eyes with this procedure, so you have to warn people there. And it's really, for us, we like to make sure that we're doing testing of the eyelids, looking at the surface, and now with some of the newer uh, testing modalities and technologies, we're able to detect those patients that maybe aren't a great candidate for LASIK while in the past they, they underwent surgery. The other thing is we want to make sure you don't get a warped cornea. So people that have a little thinner corneas or have a, a little shape issue with your cornea, which we can detect with a lot of our technologies now, our imaging uh, stations that we have are just really pretty incredible. Now we can really prevent a lot of those people that ran into problems in the past. And then the newest kit on the block is called SMILE. And really the way I think of it is it's almost a small incision LASIK. What we're doing is we make a tiny little pocket and remove a small sliver of the cornea right from the middle of your cornea. It really is truly a, a land, uh, landmark and, and groundbreaking procedure. Uh, I, I've just been astonished what this can do for patients. It reduces the risks of ectasia, of dry eye, and the cool part is we're now getting literally the wow effect that we're seeing with LASIK with, with actually a safer procedure. Many of our patients are better than 2020 vision after this, and, and a large number of them are literally seeing 2020 the day after surgery. 
it's really an exciting time to be a patient and also a physician to offer these kind of great technologies uh, to our patients. If you've got any questions about these procedures, make sure you contact us. I look forward to seeing you soon.